I'm just gonna dive straight into it and explain how this whole thing started. So while watching Fusion University against Team Envy, the quarterfinals of North American contenders, I heard some sound bites from the casters that really intrigued me and sparked my interest. Here's an example of one thing that really stuck with me. Well, Fusion University also rep another support player, and that is Elk, and these two have been undefeated since playing together. Yeah, a support duo that has been undefeated since playing together. Like, what? What does that even mean? A support duo that has never lost a match together? Like, why is nobody even talking about this? Why have I never heard about this before? Then I kept watching and I noticed that there was a lot of hype behind Fusion University and they were the clear favorite in their match. And then the casters revealed that Fusion University have won the last two contenders finals and not only that, they did it while never losing a match. 16-0. At this point, I'm completely freaking out. I'm like, what the hell is going on here? I mean, you have a team that is going for a three-peat. Yeah, this is definitely really interesting. So the match didn't even start yet, and the casters were just giving some context, so I decided to watch my first ever contenders match, and it was Fusion University against Team Envy. After watching map 2, I knew Fusion University was special. They seemed so polished, especially for a contenders team. It was like they were ahead of the curve. And then they actually start losing momentum, and they fall behind two maps to one against Team Envy. They are one game away from losing their entire playoff run. Let this sink in guys. They are about to lose for the first time ever in contenders. Ah! But something happens, they turn on a switch, and I know that switch when I see it, because I've competed and I've also watched so many competitive matches before, and that's the clutch switch. Fusion University has a button they press, and everybody just gets in the zone and pops off, and that's exactly what happened. They clutched it out and won the next two maps in a row. Now it was amazing watching Fusion University keep their composure and clutch it out, and then I hear another sound bite from the casters. Yeah, big pats on the back. History not made, but history does repeat itself. Fusion University again in a five map set managed to win things out. Yeah, apparently this isn't the first time Fusion University goes to a map five and clutches it out. As a matter of fact, they do this time and time again. About 40% of their matches in contenders has gone to a game five and they have always managed to come out on top. Now this is where I'm like, okay, how in the hell does Fusion University keep pulling this off? I want to get to the bottom of it because what I watched was amazing and then on top of that, Fusion University has this whole storyline behind them of how they've been dominating contenders from the very beginning and I just want to uncover the truth. What is their secret to being so good at Overwatch? And I treated this documentary as a detective trying to solve a mystery. I went into the documentary blind with absolutely no knowledge about Fusion University and at the end of my documentary, I formulate my own opinion with evidence I was presented with and I give my explanation to why I believe Fusion University is such a special group. This video right here documents my entire journey from beginning to end, so sit tight and enjoy the show. Alright, so at this point, I need to learn more about Fusion University. I need to understand their background and their story in order to start this whole thing. Although I need to do a ton of research on my own, it would really help to be put on the right track and talk to someone who would know about this stuff. I need someone in the Overwatch community who follows the competitive scene, and that's where it all hit me. The person I needed to start this whole documentary was my very own best friend and Overwatch personality, Kim. King Michael. He's been following the Overwatch scene since day one and he's accumulated thousands of subscribers by uploading a video every single day on his channel. I knew I had to talk to him about this documentary and really take in everything he knows about Fusion University. Alright, I'm kind of nervous but it's my first interview. Let's do it. Hey, what's hey, up? How's it going? How you doing man? What's up? How you been? Just hanging out, just making a video, what's going on? You're making a video, of course you are. So basically I'm doing a documentary on Fusion University. 
And basically what I want to get to the bottom of is why they're so good. So basically I was watching them on Overwatch Contenders. I was watching the stream and they just seem so good. They seem so polished, so innovative. Like everything they're doing was so advanced for contenders. And I just want to get to the bottom of this. And I just want some background info on who this team is, basically some context. And I'm, you're, the, you're my best friend, so it all works out. Like you're the guy to talk to, you know? Yeah. I mean, what do you, you just want to know from like the beginning to now? So from the beginning, who are they? Like, what are some of their accomplishments? Just give me some background context. How do I start this interview off? Okay. Well, I mean, I guess I'll just go over, like, the start till now. Yesterday, I was making a video, and I was talking about, like, the European Contenders Finals. And then we started talking about North American ones, because they're happening tomorrow. And obviously, Philadelphia Fusion University is there once again for the third time in a row. They haven't lost third yet. Third time? Third time in a row. Undefeated, basically. They've, they've lost one match. In their whole entire existence, but it wasn't really like an official match. After season one uh, land finals in Poland, they faced off against the champions of Europe, which was the British Hurricane, and that's the only time they ever lost an actual set. And it was like an exhibition match, you know. So, so North that America doesn't really count. Yeah, technically, it doesn't really count. In official North American contenders matches, they are I think they're like twenty three and zero right after just winning their semi final. And, you know, like, that's one of the most incredible streaks. Wait, 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 say that again? What's a streak? It's like, I believe it's 22 or 22, 23 games. Holy shit. For a team in Overwatch? Yeah, and I mean, like, it's crazy, too, because in the contender scene, like, it's so, you know, it goes up and down. You lose players left and right. You never know if you're going to lose a guy to the Overwatch League or if another contender team is going to offer them a better contract. And Philadelphia Fusion University... You would think to be able to go, you know, 22 games in a row over the course of an entire year without losing, that you would have the same roster, right? But they've made a lot of changes. Every single season, they've either lost a player, added a new one. Uh, a lot of people thought that this season was going to be the time they finally lose, and here they are in the grand final once again, because they lost players like Who Are You, who is considered one of the best players of all, t all time, right? At least one in Overwatch League. Zachary, he was a key part of them. Beast Halo, he played for them in the first two seasons at their main tank. So, you know... They haven't really kept the same pieces besides, like, Elk and Alarm. Those are the only two guys still, like, hanging around. And I believe Elk is going to be gone after this season as well because he's moving on into the Overwatch loop with them as a as a sub there. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. They, they're just incredible. The streak they're on is unreal, in my, in my opinion. That's crazy. Dude, 23, 22, and 0. Like, yeah. two players, like Elk and Alarm, you say, these are the only two players that stayed consistently through the three Overwatch contender seasons correct yeah i mean they have to be something special has to be with, with them too right like they, they are they the x factors i i definitely think that like a lot of people say alarm is the next jonak going into the overwatch league he's an out of player it seems like he is ahead of the curve elk's really good he's been a consistent shot caller he communicates very well he can lead the team but i feel like there's more behind it rather than just having like the core two players i feel like the organization really knows what they're doing Overwatch League team, they're in the grand finals as well. Not many people expect the Philadelphia Fusion to even make the playoffs. So I feel like a, a part of it is, yeah, Elk and Alarm, they're incredible players, but also the organization and the backing they have. They just, they hire the right guys. Aero, he was their head coach for the first season. Yeah, he's not there for the, uh, the second or the third season, but that's a guy who was really good at his job and went on to the Overwatch League. They facilitated a lot of players. So I think the organization also has a big part in it. That, that's unbelievable. I mean, what, what are your predictions here? You think they're going to take three feet again? You think they're going to get that? Well, feet? I definitely think they have a good chance at it. Um, Atlanta Academy is definitely a strong roster, and they've been together for a while now. They were kind of known as last night's leftovers. They've made changes here and there, but they've had uh, consistent performances over the past couple seasons. And leading into this season, uh, there was a huge showdown match. Like I think it was a week and a half ago. Atlanta, they were four zero. Philadelphia Fusion, they were five or four zero as well. They're both in Group A. The showdown to see who's going to be undefeated and get that first seed. And uh, Philadelphia University, they smacked them 4-0. It wasn't even going into the playoffs, uh, the final. It's going to be a rematch. Atlanta's looking for revenge, but I'm not too sure if they're going to be able to get it. Philadelphia just always come in clutch. That, that's also not, they come in clutch. I mean, three times, I mean, two times they, they've won at land, right? The contenders was land, the finals? Mm. I think first was the land. Yeah, yeah, second season was also Atlanta as well. The finals was. It was the World Cup, yeah. Wow, that's insane. Okay, so how could Atlanta even prepare for this? Like, they're undefeated, basically. They haven't lost a match, really. So who should I talk to? Atlanta needs to look at their last match against Philly and figure out what went wrong for them. 
I'm sure a ton went wrong and I'm sure they know that already, but they need to like, they have to narrow it down to like a specific thing that they need to change because they don't have a lot of time. It's like two weeks ago, ago, 10 days. In 10 days, you can't really change a lot. You can change like small parts of your play style, but after a full season of like three months of playing, you have a defined play style. And to try to switch it all up so much right before a big match, it's it's going to be hard with that limited amount of time. It's possible. Look at somebody like the one Spitfire. Obviously, something just clicked with them in the finals or the playoffs overall. But to the LA Gladiators, 0-3, they got wrecked. And then, boom, snap. Something happened and they went on a crazy run. That could happen, but that's more like on the side of like a miracle or, you know, everything just coming together out of nowhere. That doesn't happen a lot. So they really need to figure out what went wrong, focus on a and try to fix those. Other than that, I think Philadelphia Fusion University probably has it in the bag. Their experience is definitely going to come into play here. Atlanta, they already lost to them, so that's my prediction. All right, now I have one final question. So I'm making this documentary. I don't want to just make like an analysis video, like look at their vibes and just like, you know, and like analyze it. Like anybody could pretty much do that, right? Like if you have the game knowledge, you could just analyze a play. I want to go deeper. I want to interview some players. I want to get into the minds of some players. Who are some players that I should interview? Should I interview some people from Atlanta maybe? Or should I interview some people from Fusion? Like, what should I do here? Well, I feel like you can cover all angles. Obviously, since the finals is tomorrow, right? C contacting somebody from Atlanta after the game wouldn't be too bad. Even if Atlanta wins, they pull off a crazy, incredible win, right? That would be Getting an interview with somebody over there would be, would be awesome. And if they lose, then you can ask them about, like, what's it like going up against something so, like, big, you know? Like, this is a historic run for Philadelphia Fusion. A whole entire year. Of competing without losing in a professional match that's crazy though so. yeah that's what i'm saying i can't believe it but then also contacting somebody from uh philadelphia university scene if you get anybody over there that'd be great some coaches you know you don't always have to keep it to players i'd be contacting coaches former players obviously so just any who's worked with the philadelphia fusion university in the past or with them currently i think you get some good inside information from them and figure out what's like helped to make their run so incredible yeah, I mean, I want to get to the bottom of it. That's the reason why I'm doing this whole thing. You don't understand what I'm saying? That makes sense to me, man. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. I really appreciate it, dude. Yeah, no problem, man. See ya. See ya, dude. Okay, so the first mission is complete. Michael gave me a lot of information I can work with and really gave me a direction going into this documentary. I learned a lot about Fusion University's history and I understand what it takes to finalize this project. And that's trying to contact anybody I possibly can that's associated with the Fusion University organization. However, before I do that, my next step was actually to get another source of information about Fusion University. And I went with the best possible approach asking you guys so i literally got on reddit and asked you guys a simple yet complicated question i said fusion university has won the last two contender seasons have the best game record in both groups and are currently 5-0 in matches and just destroyed today top three reasons do you guys think they are so good the number one answer with the most upvotes said this elk and alarm are the best support duo at least in any contenders maybe in any contenders region they must be really good at coaching hires as they are on their third coach in three seasons and the first two are both in the overwatch league right now also fusion as a whole organization are very well run and are willing to put more resources and money into their academy team than most they also just have a winning tradition. This quote was really interesting and the rest of the answers just reassured me to stay on the track I was heading to and one other thing. The names Elk and Alarm were all over the Reddit post which means it's a must to get an interview with either Elk or Alarm. Without an interview with either of these guys, I would never be able to get key insider information that would help me complete this documentary and it just wouldn't be possible. So the next step was contacting everybody associated with Fusion University for an exclusive interview that would help me better understand why they are so dominant. It all comes down to this. It's been a long road here, Avast, but finally we are here. It's finals day, and it's going to be Fusion University taking on the hot dogs themselves, Atlanta Academy. And now this is looking like a story we've seen so many times before. Fusion University going to be your contenders champions once again. They've done it. They've done it again. Three times. Three times. The back, the back, the back. Wow, we really prepped a graphic for this. We did. 
Yep. Which we, it deserves. It does. That's crazy. That's crazy, especially with how good of a fight that Atlanta put up. It, it's just excellence over a long period of time to a degree that is really unparalleled in a lot of other facets, not just in Overwatch, but in other games. Fusion University continues to be one of the most well-run organizations with some of the most promising talent in Overwatch. They did it. Fusion University pulls off the three-peat, cementing themselves as a dynasty reigning supreme over all of contenders. They beat Atlanta Academy four maps to two, and on top of that, they remain undefeated going 24-0 in contenders history. After messaging everybody I could, I got in contact with the one person who can truly explain the historic success attained by Fusion University, and after many conversations with the Fusion University staff, I I got the opportunity to interview none other than Fusion University's shot caller, Elk. Now getting Elk on board for this documentary was extremely important for me because he was on every single Fusion University championship roster, he's the leader and the brains behind the operation, and if there's one person who could truly give me inside access to Fusion University, it's Elk. Interesting. Very interesting, yeah. Hey man, what's going on? Dude, I've been waiting so long to get interviewed. <laughs> so basically what I'm doing is I'm doing this documentary, right? So basically what I'm doing is I, I just want to figure out why Fusion University is so good. So I asked Reddit for help. I'm like, what, like, where do I start with? I asked like members of the community, who do I start with? Like, who do I interview? Almost everybody said you. They said you're the face of Fusion. <laughs> you're the genius. You're the brains behind the operations. What is up, man? Welcome to this interview. Wow. And after oh, this interview, you'll find out it's all a lie. <laughs> Wow, okay. That's <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm going to go mute. You guys enjoy. All right, thank you so much. For okay, yeah, sure. For sure, of course. Alec, congrats, man. Three-time... Thank you. ...contenders champion. 24 and 0. 24 and 0. How does it feel to be the face or in the midst of a historic run? Um. So it's pretty interesting, right? Because I'm not a really confident person. So, like... Every game, like, the week before, I'm like, oh, shit, we're going to lose. Like, we're not prepped enough for this. We're not ready for it. And then it's like, come that match day, every time coming through, especially with, like, this season, week one, we didn't have that much time to prepare. So we had a 3-2. The fourth week against Miami Academy, we had a 3-2. Quarterfinals against Envy, we had a 3-2. So, like, it feels unreal. And when you step back and look at it, you're like, holy shit. Like, that's insane. The run we've had. Speaking about confidence, I mean, you're saying you're not confident. I mean, I've seen your Twitter post. I mean, I love it. Uh, I mean, you have a, uh, you retweeted a picture of you holding up the three, and you said, <laughs> you said we took this before we even played our playoff matches. I mean, are you actually confident? And if you are, like, does it have an impact with the way you play? Um. So it's, I think I think I'm confident as soon as I'm actually in the game. It's just that like the time leading up to it, I'm just thinking about everything that could go wrong all the time. So I'm like, like as we a good example is we're walking out of spawn on like Hanamura attack against Atlanta, and I'm like, okay, if they're playing May Bastion, we're going this comp. If they're playing Bastion Widow, we're playing this. If they're playing Goats, we're playing this. If they're playing like uh, on a Zen backline, we're going this comp, and we're rolling out like this. Just because the entire time we're not playing, I'm sitting there like, okay, what is all of the worst things that can happen, and like, how do I best prep people for it? Um, so I'd say that I'm confident in the match and probably like immediately after, but all the time leading up to it, I'm always panicked and nervous, just trying to make sure everybody is as ready as possible. Well, as a former player, I mean, the anxiety always gets to you. I mean, you're, it's not really like, I don't think you're nervous. I just think you're, you're anxious. I mean, like it's the match, you know, it's match day. And speaking of like everything that could go wrong, I mean, which you guys prepped so well against, against, uh, Atlanta. I mean, the Hanamura take, just explain that. How did you guys... You know, come up with it's like you guys knew exactly what they were doing, and you exactly countered the way you know you were supposed to. What's the so two CP, two CP is one of my favorite game modes for that because it feels very strategically oriented based on how like the respawns kind of work and how whenever you're either attacking first point or defending second point, you really have like such an advantage in terms of you get to choose what you play, and they have like no time to swap really. So. The first time we played Atlanta on Hanamura, we knew they were going to play the comp, but we didn't know what to do against it. When I first reviewed the VOD, 
um, the first Atlanta match, there was actually a really funny moment about 60 seconds in our comms where like, no one has any idea what to play, right? So we sit and spawn and we're just like all talking and Transic goes like, can we go goats? I say, well, they're on May Bastion. I don't think we can play goats. What if we go like on a Zen dive? And then um, Nice chooses to go Sombra. And I think we end up on Sombra Tracer dive. And it's like that really like communal, when we're not sure how to prep for something, we're confident about just like going into the match and working it out on the spot. And we did it in the first match against Atlanta. I think we, it's why we were so, so successful yeah, on Hanamura. Whereas like the second time coming into it, they kind of did the same thing to us. We're like, first point was still super successful. We got to execute our plan, but we had no idea what to do on second point against their comp. We've never played against that. We've never talked about it. In the middle of the match, we're actually like sitting there thinking about how to break it. And what we ended up doing, if you actually watch the final fight is, we let me go solo their Ana. That was the start of our plan. And then everybody tries to save me when they counter dive. So like, that's like not like a normal plan and probably not something we'd do if we had time to like sit down and go through it. But definitely thinking on the spot, I feel like is one of the things Fusion Uni is, is definitely best at. Really, I mean, you guys have, you guys are so like versatile with your game. I mean, Symmetra. You guys brought out Symmetra <laughs> on two occasions. I won the Hanamura. Yeah. Could you explain? I am sure the Hollywood, but what the Hanamura, the two-second switch. You start off symmetric, you switch to yeah. What what, what was so, the point of that? Just one. So it it's the two things. One, it's a small time save, so alarm's going to go high ground anyway. TPing him is just quicker. Oh, so you TP. Um, okay. Two, if I push out on Mercy, it takes us longer to swap if we want to end up swapping our comp. But also, if they try to close hold us, mm -hmm. they just lose because they can't get our Zen. And no one else in our comp is diveable. So it's like it's kind of just like tiny and better. It's not it's like speeding out a spawn on Koth. It's like a small thing you can do if you're gonna swap Mercy, but Makes sense. not necessarily like the biggest strategic thing. Whereas the Symmetra on Hollywood is actually it's interesting. I actually hadn't scrimmed with the team at all playing that comp. They played it twice, but not with me in. So I had no idea what we were doing. They were just like, Yeah, let's go Symmetra, let's push. The other reason we chose to do Symmetra there is the main comp we were playing on Attack Hollywood was Pharaoh Mercy Sombra. Yeah. But based on how 66 went and how um, Hanamura went and how Nubani went, we didn't want to play. We wanted to just match them goats on goats. We didn't want to try to mess around and do anything that's like not a Ryan Zarya comp because we felt like we were very favored playing the Ryan Zarya comp. Like mm -hmm. the number of fights we won playing Ryan, like playing goats into them when they're on goats, where like we had massive ult disadvantages, was crazy. Like Nubani overtime push on our attack. Um, on Route 66, there were like three or four fights that we 100% should lose, but we like somehow pull it out with, with our old economy. First point attack there too in overtime. Dude, I want to just get into your mind, you know, playing in these games. I mean, I want to get your thoughts on the match. So, you, Li Zhang, you guys destroy them. New body, you guys actually lose. Hanamura, you tie. And then Route 66, you lose. So, four maps pass, and you guys only get one in under your belt. So, you, you basically only won one map for the first four. And then you guys just win out 3 0. Uh, Busan, Hollywood, Dorado. I mean, how do you guys. You guys are just so clutch. There, there were a couple things that went into that. So the first map was the two goat mirrors. We won both goat mirrors. Garden, we almost lost 0 99, but then we swapped goats and somehow came back and won that one. Um, and we go into New Bonnie. So in scrims, we'd scrimmed them in the past couple weeks for quarterfinal warm up. And they completely destroyed us on New Bonnie. Like they full held us twice and they capped with like four and a half minutes up. Okay. So losing that map while it sucked and we probably could have won it if we played better was like nobody was really hurt about it because in scrims it was like not even competitive. In scrims it was like we just got like brutally ran over and we were we were like whatever, forget about it, move on. Um, Hanamura I think was a bit demoralizing for people. It's really great that we ended up holding it to a draw, yeah. but we knew we could have definitely won the map if we had played it a bit cleaner, especially on our attack for second point since we had so much time. Yeah. Um, they had that May on defense. Yeah, 66 was 66 was interesting because we definitely could have won it. You know, it went to 5-4, which is fucking long for an escort map. Like, that's insane. But it, we, it was also like we had a fight where we had EMP, Grab, Shatter, Beat, Trance, and we lost into, like, three ults. Just because we were too slow, they diva bombed, pushed. It picked Alarm, they decloaked our Sombra, and it was, like, a really bad setup for the fight. So I think that, like... Even though we had lost all those maps, everybody was like, we know we're playing better. There's a few minor mistakes we're making in fights that are costing us fights. 
And then, like, the other thing we realized is the fights we were doing best in, we weren't doing anything, like, crazy or out of the box in. The mm -hmm. fights we were doing best in were just, like, playing goats, like Li Zhang, mostly. Playing goats, not doing anything fancy, trying to just win fights straight up and just, like, outskill them on that level. And as soon as we realized that, like, we go to Busan, normally on downtown in Busan, which was the first map, we would play uh, Pharaoh Widow. Mm -hmm. But we're, like, not going to do anything fancy, just going to go goats and match them. We, we take that map, we go to Sanctuary. Oh, yeah. No, Sanctuary being the second yeah, yeah, map yeah, yeah. we saw. We stay, stay goats, we end up taking that, we go to Hollywood, we just say, fuck it. Don't care about any of our plans, any of our prep, just play goats into them, run sure, goats into them, and we full hold them, cap, full hold them, cap. And it, it, it definitely took a little bit in the series to figure out like how they had prepped and specifically what they were strong on, because the first time we played them, they had no idea how to beat any of our comps. But like... The small tweaks they made, like playing Moira on Garden and Moira on Route 66, as well as like the defense comp on Hanamura, definitely caught us off guard a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing that's really interesting I see with Fusion University is that you and Alarm are the only two players to actually be on all three championship squads. I mean, that, that, that means two things in my eyes. Two, one, it means you guys are amazing. Two, it also actually you know, really says something about Fusion University as an org. I mean, could you tell me uh, their, their role they play into your success? I mean, do they give you more resources than other orgs? I mean, do they have a system in place? I mean, what do they provide for you that other orgs don't? And how do they contribute to your success? So I think I think there are a lot of a lot of things. So so first the stuff that like Fusion Uni provides the team. So in season one Obviously, we had a full-time translator and slash team manager, whose name was uh, Alice. We had Arrow, who's now the coach of Dallas Fuel. And about halfway through Contenders, we picked up a coach named Pagion, who's now the head coach of Vancouver Titans. So, like, the coaching lineup in Season 1 was stacked, right? Like, you have two OWL head coaches who are projected to be on very good teams. Um, and that was kind of, like, the, the baseline. You know, like, I was kind of brought in... Uh, kind of alone like me and zach were brought in we had some experience playing together but we weren't very familiar with anybody else who was brought on um and we kind of just kind of just played kind of just like listen to feedback try to improve played it played as individuals but then i think like the really trying time at least for me and alarm re really everybody in season one but me and alarm since we're obviously still on uni um was right before playoffs arrow got picked up by dallas fuel so like we're flying to poland Two days before we fly to Poland, we're like, okay, our head coach just left. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of like a little scrambled before land, obviously, and before the playoffs. And it's like, I think in that week with like Poland when we played um, Optic and then we played Toronto in the finals was really like a growing moment where Alarm and I got really confident just kind of making sure that we could keep everybody on the same page regardless of what coaches were around us and making sure that like we could be a leader more so me as an individual is in terms of how I talk and how I try to lead the team, but like all of the decisions I'd make, I'd want to ask Alarm. I'd be like, do you think this is a good idea? Do you like on a Zen here? What attack comp do you think is good? Because he's an incredibly knowledgeable player and he's also incredibly mechanically skilled. So always like having him in the loop is really helpful. Um, but like Fusion, for instance, when they heard Arrow had left, Kirby took time off while Fusion's an owl, right? So like they're playing in Overwatch League. Kirby took time off to like come with us to Poland. Because they they still wanted to make sure like we had that support of having somebody there who could be like kind of an adult for the team since I was the only person who was eighteen, which is crazy. Wow. Like you have five kids and me, so it's like ha <laughs> having that like having that adult is important, even if it's not necessarily in like a strategic way, but just as like a person who can help facilitate people way. Um, and then from there, like Tucker, who's the who's the CEO of Fusion, has also just been incredibly helpful to me personally. Where like if I have a big issue or I have like questions about stuff in terms of like roster or like housing or stuff like that, like I can always go to him and he's totally like willing to open dialogue with me, respond, honestly, be like, we don't think, for instance, season two, I asked for another head coach since Pagion didn't speak very good English. It was kind of awkward to try to like have a head coach who's always going through a translator and made like a small divide. And Tucker pretty much told me like, if you find someone qualified, I'm totally willing to pick them up but I don't think there's anyone qualified. So you're gonna have to like show that and prove that to me. And like, that was really nice feedback because it was direct and was honest, right? We're like, if we find someone who's good, we can totally go with them, but may be confident in that decision and don't like expect us to do that for you, which I, I appreciated the honesty in that especially. I don't think Fusion has necessarily given us anything that 
other orgs wouldn't. But I do think that Fusion has by far been the most supportive in terms of just like making sure all their scouting and all their pickups are like top tier players and making sure that the goal isn't to have a winning academy team despite that's what's happened. The goal is to like get players who they want in OWL. Okay. So like that's that's the goal of Fusion Uni is like the players who stay on Fusion Uni are either going to Fusion or some other high ranking OWL team. Like the goal isn't to win contenders. The goal isn't to like sign popular players. The goal is to prep players for OWL and make sure they're successful in Overwatch League. That's, that's Which it, it should be the goal of contenders teams. Yeah, that's honestly amazing. It's it like just, you guys are just like organically building up players. So are you are you done with yeah. are you done with Fusion University? Are, are you going to move up full time, or are you going to be a two way player next season? Do you know? Or um, so I'm I'm on a two way contract. Um, okay. at the moment, there will be some. That's more all we're going to say. That's all we're going to say. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I want to ask basically one last question. If you guys, if you could just like hit every angle here. Um, how, how is Fusion University so dominant? If you could put it into like your statement, like how, how are you going to wrap it up? How are you guys so dominant compared to every other team? So that's, that's an interesting question. How have we been so dominant? Okay, so from my perspective, the way I IGL as a player is very much where if someone else isn't doing something, instead of getting annoyed with them and asking them to do it, I will just do it. So if that comes from like setting up strategies before a game to talking about stuff to reviewing um, from everything to like target calling in game. Like I gave an example when I was reviewing on stream, like if I'm Mercy and I see somebody at one HP, I'm going to yell their one HP and hope everybody kills them because like that's what needs to happen in that moment for us to win the match. So I think that like that's kind of just been the attitude on uni It's like it doesn't matter what the score is in the match. It doesn't matter what the ults are in the fight. Like we're making the best decision to win the series every single time. And as long as everybody is consistent in that, it's really easy to like, like we win map fives all the time, right? We've never lost a map five. And the reason for that is when we get there, everybody knows like this is when you have to be playing your best or you shouldn't be here. You have to pop off. Because like if you're the person who gives up in map five, not only are you like letting yourself down, but you're also letting down all your teammates who like care so much about keeping it there. And um, I think that that mentality of like, because every match we play is going to be the most stressful for any team because we're not expected to lose. Like we're never analytically, we can never be like the underdog. That's just not possible at the moment. So it's like every match we play is like, this is the match. We are going to win it. We know we can win it. We just need to like all try our very, very best. And like if we lose and we all tried our best, no one's going to be mad. In scrims, for instance, we play an owl team and we get smacked. It's like. We all tried our best. We couldn't beat them. So let's look at it and like try to learn from it. Um, it just so happens that I think that the skill level we're at in NA contenders is like above the majority of the teams. Definitely. All right. Um, thank you so much. Are you from New York, by the way? You ever... I am. I live in upstate New York. Yeah. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn. But anyway, thank you so much for this interview. I really appreciate it. I learned a lot. I have actually one more question. You could decline to sure. answer. Grand. You could tell them to decline. Are you an undercover robot? No, I wish. It'd be way easier. We need to sleep. He's lying. He totally is. <laughs> totally that's, that's why he doesn't sleep. <laughs> All right, yo. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. Thank you, Grant, for yeah. setting it up. Really appreciate sure it. Of course, uh, man. If you have any follow ups, feel free to like DM them in the group chat and I'll try to get back to them. All right. Thank you so much, man. Awesome. Good luck with your future. No problem. Career. I'll be watching. Thank you. you. Definitely put yourself on the Thanks, back. man. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Wow, honestly guys, I'm just at a loss for words. That was just simply amazing. I learned so much from this interview. It was really informative, especially coming from the perspective of Elk. This historic run we've been talking about is literally his reality. He's living in it. And just to have a chance to talk to him and pick his brain is truly incredible. Now, before I talk about what went down in the interview and give my thoughts, there's one more person I wanted to talk to. And this person was also important because he would add another perspective perspective to the documentary. And like Michael said, I need to gather information from all angles. I messaged coaches, I messaged ex-players. Unfortunately, Elk was the only person I could get a hold of from Fusion University, and even getting him was a miracle. But I did get one more person to interview for the documentary, and this is where things might get interesting. The person I'm gonna interview next is none other than Atlanta Academy's team leader and strat caller, Ajax. Now this would help me get in the mind of a person trying to compete and prepare against Fusion 
Asian University. A difficult task since they never lost. So how do you prepare for a team that has never lost? How do you even formulate your strategy? I also wanted to compare notes between Fusion University and other organizations and contenders. See how their approaches and preparation may differ from one another and really analyze the situation through multiple perspectives. Yeah, what's up, Mo? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? I'm all right. You can, as you can tell, I'm really sick, but <laughs> I had to get this interview. I had to talk to you, man. I know. So, mm -hmm. so I, yeah. I know you're the you're the last person to ever want you know congratulations for second place. I mean, of course, but I mean, yeah. dude, you had an unbelievable run. I mean, you should be so proud of yourself. I mean, you literally went toe to toe with you know an unbelievable dynasty. You almost took him down. I mean first four maps they only won one map out of the first four i mean you should be proud of yourself man yeah i mean it's uh, it definitely sucks getting second dude i'm not gonna lie oh, yeah, no. but i mean yeah it, it's an improvement so dude, each season gets better dude you're so fun to watch like your team like at Lynn academy mm -hmm. like you guys play so aggressive and like you guys have these like secret strats where like you know uh, like on defense, so you guys hide, flank, and I don't know where you guys just rush, you know, into their spawn. Mm -hmm. Is that a strategy that you came up with, or? Mm, I'm not specifically sure which which scenario it is, but it depends on like, it depends on scenarios. That's like, a lot of uh, where you guys uh, come out of the right. Right, right, right. So that was um that was Silence's strat, the Overwatch League uh, analyst. Basically, the whole idea of it is like. As a team, we know if we're playing goats into um, like a like a Vera, like Sombra kind of comp, yeah. that you yeah. need to be able to find a way to engage on their backline because if you just sit there and take spam, especially on a high ground, like you're just gonna get roasted. Mm -hmm. So um, the whole idea was we needed to figure out how to get on their backline. And Silence gave us the idea of if we sit up top yeah. in the stairs room and let Sugar uh, third person scout with shield up, that we can probably just find a Zen. Um, and mm -hmm. if you can't find Zen, you find Mercy. Just so that was like the whole idea of it. Yeah, that was the idea of it. Because once you get ulted, it goes like the, the, that comp can't stop you. So you just need to make sure you can win the first fight. Yeah. I mean, what are your thoughts on the match? Like, I just want, like, you're, you had some time to, you know, think about it. You had some time to, you know, let it process in your head. Like, what are your thoughts on the match? Um, I'm sad we lost. <laughs> I'm sad we lost, obviously. Yeah, of uh, course. Uh, but. We, we learned a lot from it, like something that I think our team more than other teams needs to do because we have a lot of like young players, a lot of rookies, a lot of people that are new to like high tier Overwatch, like we really need to just work on being like calm and composed in matches and we need to, um, well, it's okay to have pop off moments, like I mean I scream so loud sometimes, um, but like uh, when it comes down to it, like we need to you know, play our game and do the things we know. We can't, we can never tilt, we can never get lax. We always need to be focused like 100% all the time. That's something like we can, we can definitely improve on as like a six. Was that something that happened in the match? Were you guys tilting ever or at, at any time or? No, I, I don't think people were tilting. I mean, definitely at the end of the series, like it, like those last two maps, we kind of got rolled over and it was kind of, um, we were probably a little bit burned. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily demoralizing. I mean, Busan was a little demoralizing, but like, because we made like one team mistake on downtown, cost us the first round, and then Mecha Base was just like a series of unfortunate events. Mm -hmm. So like it was pretty upsetting from that perspective. But um, it's really hard when you're in a best of seven, especially because that was I think like map six by the time we got to um, Hollywood. So we had a draw, and then we was it, it was either five or six maps, um, and it was like you really have to stay focused. It's really hard sometimes. Um, so it's just something as a team we can definitely work on. Now, dude, like this is something I gotta ask you. Um, going to get going up against, uh, you know, Fusion University. I mean, these guys are, you know, they're undefeated. They're twenty three and zero at this point. They're the two time, mm -hmm. you know, champions and contenders. Like, how do you prepare for that? Like going in, like even mentally or even like strategy wise. Like, how do you prepare going into, you know, a match like that? Especially because it's the biggest match of your careers. Yeah, mentally, you just want to beat them. Like, that's all it is. Like, you, you put, like, all of your heart into wanting to win. Yeah. So, um, it's not, it's not like, in, intimidating. It's more so, like, 
this is going to be like our shot to do something special. It's not, it's like, I, I don't think anyone on the team was ever intimidated at Fusion Uni. I don't think anyone on the team was ever scared of them, right. but we just needed to, uh, we just needed our player game and we knew going into the match, we knew everything we needed to do. We were very well prepared. We just need the player game and they just happen to play a little bit better than us that day. So going, to, going up against them like psychologically, does it have any effect to you guys? Like these guys are like the champs, like they never lost. Does that have any, psych even if you don't want to admit it, does it have any, <laughs> you know, does it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, this, it, it, like, this may sound ignorant, but no, like, I mean, I know in my mind personally, like okay. all I can think about is like, this is the game. Mm -hmm. We know exactly what we're doing. I just need to do what we know we're going to do and we'll win. Yeah. It's not like. I know, I know that sounds very, like, um... No, it doesn't. Because I, I know there's a lot of people out there that are probably going to be like, there's no way you play against Fusion Uni and don't think that it's, yeah, like, yeah. scary, but... I don't know, in my mind, personally, it's just like, this is Fusion Uni, we know what we need to do, and I know we could beat them if we played I mean, our game. You have to have that mentality going up against them. Like, if you have any psychological doubt, I mean, it's not going to go your way at all, you know? Well, yeah, it's just like like we spend in their spawn and in Bonnie, like because we know that they're playing spam comp. Like if you for one second are scared or you're hesitating against that comp, like a fair is just going to get barrage in two seconds and kill your whole team. So like you need to trust your teammates, you need to play the game, and you need to just like focus like on 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 making the plays you need to make. If that makes sense. Yeah. So so after uh, after Route sixty six, you guys are up two one. How do you guys feel at that moment, like being up against the champions? That was pretty hype. I'm not gonna lie. We were screaming pretty hard after 66. We were we were hyped up. I think um, everyone knew. Like I think everyone realized that this is our chance. Like if they didn't realize it by then, like we all realized it. That like yeah. by when we were up in the series, like this is our moment. We just we just couldn't pull through at the end, unfortunately. If you had, if you could replay the match. I'm giving you a time machine. You go and you replay. Okay. You're in the beginning of the match. <laughs> it's Lee Zhang Tower. Like, what would you do differently throughout the whole series? Um, I would have reminded teammates more going into 99 zero fights that we didn't need to overall. I definitely did that, but I feel like I could have been more stern on making sure that we're not overalting when we're up 99 zero on a cough. Mm -hmm. And I think that on Hanamura, we were discussing. Like we had a comp, right? We we knew we wanted to go like monkey into ash comps, and we decided on our second attack that we wanted to go Ryan, even though we had prepared to go monkey. And I should have just put my foot down and said, "No, we're going monkey. We're sticking with what we know." Mm. But other than that, I think most of the series was played pretty well. I think there was a whole mess on Busan of like multiple things that happened, okay. like as a team, um, like multiple calls by like everybody that were just really bad that led to us losing the map but like those two things in particular i think for sure what i would have reminded not overalting on 99 zeros and just reinforcing that constantly because like you know it, it's important to remind your teammates not once twice but literally three times sometimes especially in the matches where it's like really tense it's very easy to forget things so speaking about Hanamura, i think i mean when you guys were playing defense it seems like they had this whole strategy planned out to literally counter exactly what you guys were doing did you expect that at all? And like, how did you how did you even feel when you know when they countered you like that? Um, I thought I thought our Hanamura was pretty decent. I thought like um, I'm talking about our, uh, our, point A defense. Point A defense, like our defense or their defense uh, when they're playing Ash. Your, your defense. Our defense. Oh, so when we were playing Bastion, um, yeah. they played it really well. They they yeah. played it very disciplined and patient. So. When you're playing that comp, like when I'm playing Brig, like I have to be the one to contest most of the time, because if if our Diva goes down, he's usually just surrounded by like three sides and he just loses mech instantly. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit easier with Brig because you just have shield, but like it was really hard because they baited me down on the ground and then there was nothing I can do at that point because I had so I had I think it was a Genji on my left, either tank on my right, and then I had their Anna. I think it was I think it was an Anna shooting me yeah, from main, and it was just. Elk, yeah, Elk yeah, yeah. Sold you. He threw a nade and hit three shots. You're surrounded by all angles. Yeah, there's literally nothing you can do at that point. It was, it's hard because with that comp you can't engage main, and you can't really drop back point, or you kind of just do exactly what they want you to do. So they just played it really, really well, and yeah, I mean they they did their homework on how to beat that first point comp. Second point was a little bit different. Our second point was really, really good. Um, we held them all the way till the very end, but our first point they definitely did their research on. 
uh, and they played it well. But in the heat of the moment, you can't really think about that kind of stuff. You just have to say, okay, well, well, shit. <laughs> then you get next. You gotta get the next point, you know. I mean, you guys had a great defense there with the May. Um, yeah, we. Mm -hmm, yeah. Them, so. Yeah, I switched over to Zen, Dogman, said Anna. We got a May. Yeah, it was a good deal. Now, when I think about fusion, I'm, I'm just gonna ask you this question. Um, do you think there's like any factors that um, gives them the inherent advantage when they play any other teams? Like maybe if it's from you know a player level or even an org level, like are, is the is fusion the org? Are they putting like resources into you know their players that you know other orgs aren't? Like that, that's what I'm that's what I want to know. I think that the biggest advantage that fusion has, and and this is like the main advantage that fusion had over a lot of teams, especially us going in the playoffs, is they have a lot of experience going to tournaments. Going to the map fives, like it's it's become a meme at this point. Like fusion going to map five, yeah, they have a lot. Of, yeah, they have a lot of experience with going to map fives, going late in the series, staying disciplined, and doing these things. That's just something that our team just didn't have experience with. Like we're a fresh team, fresh roster. They have people that like have like Changsik, for example, and other Koreans that literally have played it and and uh, Korean contenders on land consistently an entire season. Like, they know what pressure is like. They know what it's like to be in a long, a fatiguing series. And that's just something that we just didn't have. And it's not, like, any fault of anyone's other than the fact that we just are a new team. So, and there's nothing really you can do about that. It's just, like, you just take the experience, you learn from it, and then you look to get better in the next season. So why do you think they've been so dominant, though, like, for the past three contenders? I mean, they've had different rosters. The only two players they right. had was Elk and uh, Alarm. So it's not like they have chemistry. Right. I mean, they have a new roster every single time. I mean, why do you think they're yeah. so dominant? I don't understand. So, that. so season one and two, they had the the Beast Halo roster, and that roster was just mechanically better than the rest. Like they they used two RU and they played Genji, and he was nuts. Alarm was nuts, and they just found value out of like being mechanically better. And I think a lot of teams at this point have caught up. I think in a lot of ways people have caught up uh, to Fusion Uni's uh, play. Like at the beginning, like they were just they were just better. Like it didn't matter if they had strats or not, because like if you played against them, like a lot of times they just do stupid things, but they'd work out because they were just better than you. Okay. But I think um, going to season three, that wasn't the case anymore. I think in a lot of ways people were able to win maps because they had caught up Fusion Uni and mechanical skill. Uh, I don't even think like. Fusion Uni's like strategy necessarily, even in season three, was that strong either. Um, people have gotten a lot better. Um, so what made so, them? In your opinion. I mean, well, one alarm is insane. Like I have to say that. Like alarm is just a really, really good player. Um, and the rest of the team is obviously good as well. Um, I just think that going into season three, the team had experience, and the support line probably interjected that experience into their new like roster in season three and then as well as a lot of those players in season three still have a lot of experience as well like it's not like these are rookies or fresh players yeah. like these are these are these are seasoned players players that have played on like landing in contenders korea like these players are like no joke right so i think that you know maybe next season i i in my opinion we're gonna win next season i'm not like you should anyone no, again i'm just gonna ask but, you what's next for you Ajax? Yeah. that's what i was gonna ask yeah, you they're not they're not winning they're not winning it's not happening absolutely not that's that that match stung and i still feel it and it won't it's not gonna go away so <laughs> all right so you have any last words besides that we just <laughs> <laughs> no not really i just uh um i wish the season was better but at the same time the season the Atlanta roster learned a lot, and I'm really, I'm really, really proud of all my teammates, especially people like Saucy, who have no experience and stepped up. And I think like Saucy and many of the players like matured a lot this season, and they gained a lot of valuable experience, you, and, including are, myself. Are you guys sticking together 100%? Uh, yeah. I mean, there's no plans to do anything else unless someone gets picked up for Overwatch League, or, um, or yeah, someone gets sick or something. I just want to ask you one so, more question, actually, which regarding your org. Um, what's a, if you, you had to choose like one uh, goal for Atlanta, um, the the org Atlanta? What's their goal? Is it to, to win contenders, or is it to get the contenders players good enough for Al? Um, so you're talking about like Atlanta Academies in particular, not necessarily like the Owl team, but like the goal yeah. for it. Um, 
I think the well, I, I I think a big part of the team's creation was, um, and uh, we've been told this is so we can the owl team has valuable scrim practice, and a lot of owl teams do this is where they want their owl team to be able to scrim against academy. They want them to be able to say academy run these strats, run them well, so we can practice against this opponent who does this. And I think a lot of owl teams do this. Like it's not just like one or two teams. Like I've heard many teams do this, and I know that one of the big the best like the biggest goals for this team is to become like the best. Like we want to win contenders. And by and like by winning contenders, that also means we're good. And we're good enough to scrim not only just Atlanta, but we can scrim other Owl teams too. And we've also we, we get a lot of experience from those kinds of things as well. So you wanna get that trophy, man. You wanna get that first place. Oh yeah. So and a contender the contender trophy isn't enough. I want to hold an owl trophy. I, I have, I have big, I have big aspirations. I'm not, I don't want to stop at contenders. Hey, I do. I wish you the best, yeah. man. I mean, you, what, what did you say with your Twitter post? I mean, people trade you like the plague. <laughs> yeah, before Atlanta, then, it was definitely like. You got picked up and you proved yourself. I mean, second place. I mean, what a, mm -hmm. what a great run, Ajax. I mean, you literally proved yourself. Uh, you didn't win it this year, but if you work hard, you, you stay on track. Who knows? Anything could happen. Guess your goal is Thanks, to win man. next year, right? Oh, oh yeah. Oh question. yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 for sure. <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you so I want, much. I want to win. For uh, giving me this interview, I really appreciate it. Dude, I learned a lot. Yeah. yeah thanks. Thanks for having me, man. It's it's always fun. <laughs> See you, bro. <laughs>「So after all the research and evidence I've gathered throughout this documentary, I'm gonna finally answer the question of why Fusion University is so dominant to the best of my ability. This has been a very long process. I've spent so many nights re-watching the interviews and doing my own personal research in order to give you guys the best answer I possibly can. First, let's start with Elk and Alarm. This support duo is undeniably the best duo in contenders. They've been on Fusion Uni together since day one and experienced all three championship seasons together. Individually, Alarm is absolutely insane, already projected to be the next big star in the Overwatch League. Even analysts and casters believe the day he turns 18 is the same exact day he will be moved up to the Fusion Overwatch League roster. There have been many moments where Alarm actually provides the most damage not only done on his team, but done in the entire game. He's out damaging DPS monsters on his team like Who Are You, Zachary, and the other DPS players on the other team. And he's not even a DPS player, he's a support main. Not only that, Elk, who's the shot caller of the team, stated that Alarm is basically his right hand man when it comes to decision making in the game. He's always running the plan by him first because Alarm is considered a phenomenal player in regards to game sense, strategy, and game knowledge. Alarm seems to have the full package with his mechanical skill mixed with his decision making and game sense, easily a franchise player to build an entire team around. Now personally moving on to Elk, I believe this guy is a straight up genius on a strategic level and on a social engineering level. Elk doesn't see Overwatch the way we see Overwatch. Before playing the game, Elk was into playing strategy games which over the years built up his problem solving capability and algorithmic capacity accounting for many different variables at hand. Elk sees Overwatch as a strategy game, so over time, Elk is naturally going to be ahead of the curve at processing what's on his screen, analyzing the obstacle, and providing a solution to that problem. His experience of doing this over and over again in the past is why he seemed like a natural at being a strat caller in Overwatch. His gaming background paired with his charisma allows him to be a natural born leader. The aura he brings whenever talking to him portrays confidence, and psychologically, this translates over to his teammates when they hear a call by Elk being made. For example, if Elk says we're going to go straight and then left, his voice subliminally boosts the confidence and the morale of the team which directly affects the way his teammates react to his calls. His voice subliminally activates his teammates playing with more vigor, intensity, and assertiveness. When Elk makes a call, the team follows the call because they feel a sense of security and command in his voice which really brings out a rallying effect on Fusion University 
which leads to a unified, cohesive unit. This was all seen before Elk's rise in the Overwatch competitive scene. If you look at his Season 1 statistics, he was placed in the 50s and he climbed all the way up to 79 with a broken laptop. He said his elo started to consistently climb once he got a mic which shows how effective he is at communication and steering his teammates in the right direction. In my opinion, Fusion University couldn't have paired two individuals together any more perfectly. Elk and Alarm complement each other in every way possible. Next thing I want to talk about is Fusion University's coaches. Fusion University in total had about three coaches, including the one they have now, which means all their previous coaches have gotten jobs in the Overwatch League. Arrow, who coached for a couple months, is now on Dallas Fuel, and Pajon, who coached for eight months, is on Vancouver Titans. If you look at the coaches Fusion has brought in, their resumes are always very impressive and stacked with experience. Experience is key to being successful in competitive play because having a coach who's been in every situation multiple times helps the team formulate a diversified strategy, which is good for adapting on the fly as well. Having coaches with experience also shows that they work well with players on a personal level, and that's really something that's important nowadays that many teams seem to overlook. Coaches must have a good personal connection with their players in order to really inspire them and push them to be at their best. Fusion University has always performed at their best, and with two coaches being in the Overwatch League proves how well they are in all aspects from strategy, experience, knowledge, and personal connection. The next thing I want to talk about is the superstars that Fusion University recruits to the roster. Now we all know how Korea has been dominating esports and this is still consistent in Overwatch. Almost 60% of the players in the league are from South Korea and Fusion University has specifically acquired Korean superstars which includes the notorious Who Are You? According to Ajax, he was just simply dominating on Genji relying on his mechanical skill just being better than everybody else and literally nobody could really stop the havoc he was wreaking. You also have players like Bernard, Chainsick, and Nice who play their specific roles on the team and perform highly enough for Fusion to win. Fusion University also recruited Zachary, who was a DPS player and got picked up by Dallas Fuel, and he played a major contribution to Fusion's early success. Putting these championship rosters together shows how insane these players really are, but let's give credit to the Fusion University organization. The Fusion University org has managed to have completely different rosters for all three contender seasons and still managed to never lose a game. This credits the scouting and recruiting ability of the organization because they are able to assemble the perfect roster time and time again. Alec also mentioned that the players themselves sometimes scout potential fits for the team, and this really emphasizes the transparency and open relationship between the management staff and the players. Having a healthy and good personal relationship across the board establishes a comfortable and productive environment to be a part of. Fusion University has figured out a way to establish a healthy environment for their players, which lowers their stress levels to maximize player performance efficiency. They have a system in place where their main goal is to focus on player progression, building them up to be good enough for the Overwatch League. Oddly enough, this is interesting because this system does not focus on winning contenders like other organizations, yet that's exactly what they seem to do every season. Their primary focus is to mold and shape their contenders players to get to that Overwatch Overwatch League skill bracket, and this method is evidently more effective than primarily focusing on winning contenders. This can be explained in two ways. One, since their main focus is building their players and helping them become better players, they are actually putting a lot less pressure on their players since they're not stressing winning, but just asking for some improvement. Other organizations are asking for their players to win it all, and maybe that's adding some pressure and stress on these players. Also naturally, Fusion University players are being planned for the long term because one day they are hoping to play for the Fusion team in the Overwatch League. And this means that they are being more patient and playing for the future rather than the present. When you do that as a player, you become a lot less frustrated with yourself when making a mistake and instead you're willing to fix those mistakes and improve. Patience is a key factor for Fusion University success because they are known for being a team that goes to game fives and come out on top. 
Patience and stamina is critical to remain focused throughout a long series, even after playing four maps where you have to put 120% effort into it. Then you have to go to a game five and give even more to come out on top, and Fusion University has that championship mentality that makes them so clutch in these game fives. They have a winning tradition and culture where losing isn't even on their mind. They play like they're best because they think they are the best. And when you think you are the best, you play like a champion. Think of a free agent in the NFL who just got signed to the Patriots. Once you're signed under the Patriots organization, you're naturally going to assimilate to your environment, an environment where you're pushed past your limits and losing isn't an option. This is what Fusion University has done. They've established a dynasty like we've never seen before, and this is why I believe they are so dominant. We're trying to beat the Owl teams. When we scrim the Owl teams, we want to be better than the Owl teams. We're not like sitting there like, oh, well, it'll be a good learning experience. Like that's where we're trying our best. Winning contenders is a byproduct of how we practice and our mentality. It's not our goal. Our team, it's like, no, we're winning, being the best players we can be and everybody's giving it 100% or like, you're not going to try your hardest on Fusion Uni. You should get the fuck off.